Welcome to Obsession Engineering. This is the Andalusia circuit. In the garage over there is Franco's Fireblade. So this is part two of our Spanish testing. So we took a team walk around the entire circuit last night. It's three miles of awesome undulating up and down corners. It's really technical. There's a big back straight going down there into a hairpin corner. It's got absolutely everything you need to go testing. This place looks awesome to ride. Franco's a lucky lad. We're starting with the bike as we finish the Monte Blanco tests with ride height, spring rates, gearing, everything is the same. The nice thing is because we did four days of Monte Blanco, we already have uh, an electronic setting that we know Franco likes. So very little traction control, pretty much the most aggressive throttle so that he can control the spin and bits himself. Um, but we have got a lot of things to retest. So front ride heights, rear ride heights, uh, wheelbases, uh, Oles versus Bitubo, um, engine brake maps we're going to do a bit of work on as well, and Franco actually has to learn the circuit. So we've got three days of open pit, but we're going to use up a lot of time really quite quickly. We have again been blessed with nice neighbours, so we've got the Paget slot with us. Good morning. Hello Dave, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. What a beautiful place we have. It, it's nice here, isn't it? It's superb. Do you kind of want to just get rid of your rider and have a go yourself? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. Yeah. Should, have brought, should have brought the classic bikes that are run around. Oh, that'd be lovely. On my ZXR 750, yeah. it'd be ace around here. It'd be good. All right, so you've got the super bike for Davey Todd. Yes. Everything going all right so far? It is. It is. We've had a couple of little bits. Same old thing, brand new motorcycle. Just getting it knocked into shape and... That's why we go testing. It is. It is. And he's enjoying himself, so that's that, the That is the battle, isn't it? It is. Happy riders and fast rider. Absolutely. Right. Get back to work, Dave. Thank you. There was us thinking we had the luxury of the uh, Superbike teams next to us, and it turns out Lee's turned up to scruffy the place up again. Luckily, he has brought Neil with him. So, you know, the housewife's favourite has uh, brightened the place up, and Roger's here too. need your pit limit around here. <laughs> how, how many laps are you going to take him to learn this place? 15. It's a bit more complicated than Monte Blanco, uh, it isn't is, it? It is, and, and he learned that pretty good, but yeah, it's going to take a while, this one. And it's a, it's a long circuit, it's three miles, so yeah. it's not going to be that easy to get a toe off people either, no, I don't think. No, He'll work it out. He'll be alright. Right, so this is debrief after the first run out. So he did nine laps. Uh, Pete's done some videos from pit wall, so he's just comparing Franco's line to some of the other. Um, Lee's trying to get some handy tips. Uh, Franco, as normal, is asking for less traction control and more power. So I'm just going through some of the stuff on the data, data setting tool uh, and looking at the data on here. Um, it's smooth. We've not hit the bump stops on anything. Um, but we're not going to adjust anything mechanical uh, until the next session because the tyre we took out the bike had done Monte Blanco as well and was absolutely goosed. So we're nearly at the end of the first morning and Franco is out there riding around, hopefully enjoying himself. He seems to be liking this circuit. Uh, so far this morning, the only real change we've done is a little bit of preload in the rear shock purely because on the logging it looked like it was a bit stiff uh, and we moved his handlebars a bit wider just to see if he likes it or not really. And other than that, he's just traipsing into the laps, but we've got him down as a 158 so far. So he's going all right, he is. We're trying to gearing change first, and that will give us some information on rear ride height and uh, spin levels and stuff. So I've got to change the uh, gearing setting in the ECU as well. Matt, Matt isn't so sure that he needs the stall to put the petrol in the bike. Um, he was just sat on that while he was uh, checking the brakes and bits earlier. 
Right, we also have even less traction control than basically after first gear he has no traction control anymore because that's what he wants uh, i've done a little bit of a mod to the fuel map so that might help the throttle connection a little bit as well and generally we've got a few bits to work through for the afternoon um, we are going to be working through some fork settings as well but we need the rider to go and get a few laps on the new gearing so that we're only changing one thing at a time We're definitely keeping busy. Uh, half the faff of the day has been trying to get the GPS to actually work so the lap timer and the uh, logger work properly. We've been through a selection of different traction control and uh, slip rate control settings. Um, forks height settings, we're about to go and test the third version and it's the one time Frank has been sitting patiently in his helmet actually waiting for us boys. We just took too long. We, we, yeah, yeah. I, I can't believe you're saying that about Peter Mann. <laughs> Every top motorcycle racer has an element of OCD. And with Franco, it's grips. You like it nice and clean in your hand, don't you? You have to be clean. Don't, don't like anything dirty in my hand, no. And it makes them nice and sticky. Does it? Yeah. Sort you like, them out. You like it nice and grippy and sticky in your hand? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> so we're into the last hour of our open pit day one um, and even though it's open pit you can quite easily run out of time because every time you come in the pits you think oh there's not that much of a rush and so you tinker around and then realise you lose half an hour easy um, and we've been chasing around the fact the GPS kept not working um, and like lots of little bits that add up and so every time you come in you think you'll be five minutes and you, you're not. Um, so we're knuckling down, he's out for the last ride I Pesky motorbikes keep getting too loud. Uh, right, so he's out to test the last ride height setting, uh, fork height setting for today. And if he likes it, or even if he doesn't, he's gonna come in and we're gonna try a little bit of um, seat foam padding with him as well, because he likes his positioning on his bike. So yeah, we're wrapping through the day fairly quick. Right, we've finished like the last session of the day. Uh, Franco, once he's finished polishing his helmet, uh, he's just gonna go through the track map and we'll have a bit of a debrief, talk through where the bike's good, where the bike's bad, what he likes, what he doesn't like, what the feel is from the tires, all that sort of stuff. We'll make a load of notes on the track map um, and then we'll formulate a plan for what we're testing tomorrow, what we think we can improve, uh, and like, especially with, especially with, especially with Pete, who was out of shot, um, they'll talk to him like, because Pete's really good at talking about the actual riding, uh, riding techniques and that sort of stuff. So we'll all, all, you know, add little bits into the conversation until we've all decided that Franco needs to change and it's definitely not the bike. We'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> Start of day two at our Andalusia test and we got out of it about seven o'clock last night so it wasn't too bad, got some food, got some supplies in and an early night so today I'm feeling considerably better. So let's have a look at the bike and see what we did yesterday. The biggest change for the first session or for today is we've got the handlebars with the 50mm offset on them. So these sit completely in front of the uh, fork leg like a traditional handlebar whereas the ones we ran previously were set further back with the 25 mil offset bars. So basically the idea with this is it will move Franco's weight a little bit more towards the front of the bike, a bit more over the front tire. Now the road bike, the offset is pretty much zero. They come basically there, uh, but pretty much everybody else is running uh, the full front offset fork uh, handlebar. So we're gonna try and see if he likes it, it'll stay. If he doesn't like it, we'll change back. Uh, it is a bit of a game fitting these because we then have to move the thumb brake uh, and all the switch gear and everything gets a bit rearranged. The reservoir pot moved from over here to back here. Um, so a little bit of work, but it wasn't too bad. So like the slick, well-oiled team we are, Pete is double checking the bits I did yesterday with the handlebars because it's always better for somebody independent to check that you've actually tightened everything up. That's right, mate. Uh, he's marking the handlebar position uh, so we know if anything moves because I did forget that bit. Uh, Matt is organising the tyres we'll be running for like the second and third runs of the day and Franco's got his vibrator out. 
Right, this is Scott from Honda Racing, and this is John McGee's road superbike. And Scott's going to show us through it. Right, okay. Um, so this is the superbike, a few differences between this and the stock bike. Um, a few more rules and regulations which are a bit more free and open. So we've got a few nice bits on it. We've got, this is the uh, McLaren tire, pre tire pressure sensor. So that monitors the tire pressures when the bike's in motion. Yep. Live. It logs all the data for the, um, for the ECU and then obviously we, we can get it off the computers when we get back. So. Different offsets on the yoke? Yep, you can change them. We have three or four different options for them. And you have um, inserts in the headstock. That's right, yep. You can change angles and go forward and back with that. Right. What's the little lever for? Okay, this is uh, for the gearbox. So on a conventional gearbox, we've got neutral in between first and second. On this bike, with the neutral's right at the top. So in order to engage neutral, we have to press the rider has to press the switch and then um, we can get back in. Right, obligatory thumb brake, span adjuster and some uh, extra little bits on the fairing there. Yeah, so these are for John, these are on the roads, just to kick a bit of the wind off him really, off his shoulders, and also we've got some on the side here to extend the fairings out a little bit. Right, and talk me through, you've got sort of quick release connectors for the radiator and the, and the wiring looms and bits. Yeah, so all of the uh, all the looms bespoke made for us, and you know, a lot of the um, connectors are all sort of quick connectors, um, just allows for speed and ease really. And a battery under there because the fuel tank extends where the battery would normally sit. Yeah, so all of the fuel tanks at the back here and then again on the normal sort of stock bike or road bike there's a lot of fuses and bits and pieces here but for, you know we move everything here and then if obviously not for the roads but on the super bike for the BSB if there's any crashes and bits and pieces it keeps this area clean so we're not sort of damaging any looms and bits and pieces. Right, I noticed there's a, there's, there's a lug welded on here, there's a lug welded on here because that's not standard. No, so we've done this just to change the stiffness of the frame a little bit. And I also noticed that this bike's, um, this bike's not got an only shock in it. No, this is something we were trying to test here, so John wants to try the KTEC shock, see uh, the feelings and the differences between that and the Olins. Cool, and a big chunky swinging arm. Yeah, suitor. Um, new for the roads, new for the roads this year, we, we didn't want it last year, so again, we're here testing and see what John thinks of it. So all in all, it's, it's you know only a couple of quid more expensive than a super stocker. Well, quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all terribly professional in the under garage, uh, but John might have got his phone pick, picked up by one of the team yesterday. Now has pictures of balls on his phone. <laughs> Just working with a bunch of children, honestly. I, I was supposed to be a professional team, <laughs> and all I get is little hairy sacks all over my phone. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Other than that, enjoying riding around on your bike. Oh yeah, yeah, plenty of laps, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I know it's great, mate. Yeah, it's not good to be out here. It's better than being on the, the M6 with a shovel in it or something like that, oh, working God, hard. Yeah. So, yeah, I've got the best job in the world sometimes. New track for me, Montablanc. Uh, is it, whoa, where are we? Andalusia. Andalusia. Yeah, never been here before. It's, bloody, it's like three sisters on steroids, isn't it? But uh, it's uh, yeah, it's good to be out in the sunshine riding. So, cool. Enjoying it. <laughs> you were awake a little bit early today, Harry. Yes, I was. Yeah. Um, I had an alarm set on my phone at 3 a.m. So that, that was a nice early morning wake-up call. It's nice to know that the, you know, serious Honda garage can take the mickey a bit. Yeah, we're trying to have a bit of fun. A little bit. Not too much. <laughs> so the whole point of going testing is, of course, to test stuff. And one of the mods for uh, one of the Honda Superbikes for the short circuit bike is uh, a billet swinging arm. So. The swinging arms that they used last year and they're using on the roads are the fabricated, like, pressed outer swinging arms. But this is all machined. This is full billet and then welded together. So that is proper trick. You know, a bit, almost a little bit bimotor-esque, but more expensive. Right, before I left the garage, Harry's collared me because he says the trickiest thing in this whole garage is actually in his toolbox. Because you get your little pots of grease, and you open the lid, and you get your bit of grease out, and then when you close the door, look at that! I mean, I'm not saying Harry's a bit of a nerd, but he's put me to shame. <laughs> Franco is first one out on track today, so we can hear him quarrel all the way around, and it sounds like he's enjoying himself. Uh, he did one lap and pulled in, and we went, oh, I wonder what's wrong, have the bars moved? Uh, no, we're trying to put his earplugs in. Uh, 
But of course, the uh, real excuse was that he was uh, letting the pads cool after he'd uh, bedded them in. Not sure I believe that one. Airplugs. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so it's a little bit cold today and a little bit windy. It's going to get quite nice later. Um, and Franco's the only person on track, so we can hear everything. And at the moment, we can hear it quite a lot of wheel spin, uh, especially coming out the first corner. Um, yeah, that sounded like it was really spinning. And he keeps asking for no traction control so he can control it. But... <laughs> Ooh, there she spun up Ooh. again, then. <laughs> yeah, cold tyre. Sounds a bit exciting. Yeah. A bit steadier that time. Yeah. Everything all right? A bit too windy at the minute. Is it? Oh. Get coming out of corners and I'm leaning it over and as the front wheels come it's just blowing my front wheel out. Right, okay. Right. And coming down it's unsettling it. Yeah. Right, okay. And then coming into corners, blowing me right on the inside. So the next time I'll go really wide and then I'm running too wide, it's just too unpredictable. Yeah. Right, okay. Well, well, let's let's the bars. I'm not sure yet. Right. <laughs> yeah, power's out again. We're back <coughs> in this glass kettle. Them boys need a brew. Uh, you can't. You try to tell Dave he can't have a cup of tea. I, I'm not. <laughs> no chance. I know, I know it's your knot in your leathers uh, trying to ride around out there. Uh, yeah, it feels pretty windy, to be honest. So I thought I'd give that a miss. It's pretty cold, windy. Uh, feels like we're in England, to be honest. So probably some useful testing, but going to give it a swerve for the minute and hopefully it improves a little bit. Enjoying the superbike? Loving it, mate, loving it. It just uh, feels like my old stocker anyway. The guys have done a great job and just getting up to speed with it, really. Enjoying myself. The door's closed because it's still windy out there. Um, Franco's done the second run and it's still windy. So all the little chassis changes when you're trying geometry changes and handlebars and stuff, it's difficult to tell if it affects the bike because the wind affects the bike. It'll, it'll steer really nice into one corner. It won't into the next one depending on which way the wind's blowing in. But... We are not going to waste our time completely. We're going to try some slightly different gearing. We're going to go taller to keep him off the limiter in a couple of places and see if he can then run a couple of lower gears somewhere. So we can test that. Um, and we've moved the foot rests a little bit as well. We've moved them back to see if he can get his legs a bit more comfortable. And so even if we're not pushing to the absolute limit, um, we can at least still test and basically get him more comfortable on the bike and try a few different changes. Well, to be fair, around here, I, I've seen too many people's arse cracks this week because Lee, Lee tends to get changed in the garage, naked, and I bends over. Yeah, it's a little tease. tease. He does that with everybody. Yeah. Then I made the mistake of walking out the toilet, turning around and seeing Hector and Barbara's bum cheeks as well. I've managed to avoid that up to now, I'm pleased to say. You, you don't want to say it. It's not a pleasant <laughs> sight. <laughs>
It is day three of our Andalusia test, which means it's our last day of testing in Spain. Today, the weather is perfect. It's nine o'clock in the morning. We've got an hour to go till we're on track. It's already 15 degrees. The track's warming up nicely. The scenery's awesome. The circuit's nice and twisty. And this lucky little bugger gets to ride around on an awesome fire blade. Yeah, we've had some good successful days getting into the bike properly. Um, just want to get racing, really. Now you like it with full power and no traction control. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a bit annoying when the I don't like even the traction kick in. Really, I think I don't really want to get too reliant on it. So best just to get it off, really, isn't it? Is this, is this future proofing in the hope we get to superbike? Yes. And you get to bikes with no traction control and even more power. This is the training. Yeah, training for superbikes. Excellent. We had a plan at the end of yesterday for where we were going to go with the bike for today's sort of basically race simulation. So we've got in it a setting that we think is a good, like a good base setting. And it's been fairly similar at two circuits. So we know this is where we want it. And ideally, we're not going to change the bike massively circuit to circuit. Although when we get back to England, that may change. So right, we are on the Olins. Now, I'm going to touch on this again. The lap time difference between the Olins and the Batubo was less than 0.2 of a second. And of course, it varies slightly between track temperature, laps of the day, tyres and that sort of stuff. But realistically, with the same amount of tyre wear um, and a similar sort of run from putting new tyres in, the lap time, well, I think, was 0.015 a second quicker on the Olins than the Batubo. But we've actually spent more time on the Olins, so we've altered the setup on these more than we did on the Batubo. I suspect if we decide to go on the Batubo, like another half a day a day tweaking settings and we could get the performance the same. Now price wise, the Olins is more expensive, but on the Fireblade we can mod the standard shock so it actually works out pretty good. If you were buying these for any other bike and couldn't mod your Olins rear, the Batubo is notably cheaper and basically get the same lap time out of them. The only thing that Franco really notices is he's got a slightly better feel for the rear with the Olins in it. But we have had to do more setup work to get him the feel that he likes. So basically, it doesn't really matter whether you're on Olins, Bitubo, the quality in the lap time is incredibly close. And it's only when you're doing British Championship pace that you're even going to notice any difference at all. We've got a base setting for fork height, uh, shock length, uh, we've got like the power mode how he wants it so he's got uh, options on power modes basically no traction control now so basically there is only traction control in first gear after first gear there is no traction control on the bike now uh, there's a tiny tiniest little bit of anti-wheelie uh, in first and second gear and then it's clear of that as well because he likes to have the control and the power modes are basically uh, full power just a little bit softer in the first couple of gears to make it a little bit easier in and out of the slow corners When we get back to England, we will be removing the uh, Block pads and having a sort of tank extender made to fit basically the dimensions we want um, We've gone with the wider bars like the further forward bars for today And we've set them a tiny bit flatter today as well than we had yesterday but we're into the bits where we're tweaking a few millimetres here and there. We haven't actually made the final, final decision on the bar positions yet, as in those bars or the 25 mil offset ones, but we'll probably go on those. At the end of the test, we'll make a decision on brake pads on those. Uh, the SC2 front's going to be the option, we think. But basically, we are ready to go out and basically do a race simulation day, see if the boy can uh, finish the test in good style. Your motorcycle, sir. Right. Qualifying run. Right, so the boy's gone out to start his uh, like fake qualifying run. So he's going out for a couple of laps on the scrub tyres. Uh, well, new front, scrub rear. And then we'll bring him in, uh, change the rear, and then he can basically have a push for a few laps and see how fast he can go. Uh, since the last session, I've changed a little bit of damping and a little bit of preload at both ends of the bike try, to try and get rid of like a little bit of sort of chatter movement, uh, bumping or whatever you want to call it, through a couple of the corners as he's coming off the brake. It is actually possible some of that's coming from the brake disc, uh, but we'll find out because we've got a different front wheel in. Um, and 
this gives us a chance to see what the setting change makes a difference to looking at the data. So it's never quite as simple as just twiddling adjusters. Don't actually do very much twiddling of damping adjusters nowadays, so it'll be interesting to see what difference it makes. Did the front feel any better over the bumps? Front was a bit better, yeah. Yeah? Do you want me to go a little bit more and see if we can get it even better? Or are you happy with it as it is? I mean, that's quite a good lock. It is, tire. yeah. It is, yeah. 55.18. Right, we'll leave it as it is and see what the difference is on the new tyre then. Yeah. Fresh tyre and there should be a 54 there. Yeah. Are we pressured in the rear, Pete? Yeah. Cool. I know we would be. We got him into pit lane, he wants to do a 54. He did a 55 one eight on that scrub tyre, which is damn good. And as we pushed him into pit lane, Andy Irwin was waiting. And Andy is fast at the moment. So uh, he's got his rabbit, his carrot to chase. Carrot to chase? Rabbit to chase. I know what I mean. Me, me and Peter discussing the lines, Andy Irwin was a tiny bit wider and veed the corner off a bit more big bike style. Franco's learning uh, and Matt just looks nervous. <laughs> right, we're in after his uh, very educational few laps. Let's see what he's got to say. Yeah, got that, that one hard, following Andy. You on it, man? He, he saw me on the way out, so he tapped his seat. Did he? Well, yeah, he went I with him. Don't know what lap I got. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. It's a nice lap, isn't it? Uh, fifty-two nine nine. Not bad when we wanted a fifty-four. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, fifty-two nine. That's yeah, yeah. Just a few minutes now until we go out for like our race practice runner a longer a longer run Pete's just double checking the tire pressure because we've got a new rear in it um, the only thing we've changed on the bike is we've added the little extension bit back to the thumb brake just so we can get a bit more leverage on it so that's okay the handlebars we've kept wider from earlier we've not we've not changed any suspension stuff because like a race day you don't really want to go into the race on a new setup. So the bike is exactly as he did his quali runs on it. So he got into the 52s in the quali run. Um, but this run, of course, we don't need to be pushing as hard because this is a race run, so he's got to look after the tire a little bit more. And the idea of this is it gets Franco used to being on the bike for longer, for doing a full race length of uh, mileage, and basically gets him used to as well conserving the tire so that he's got some left for the end of the race and it gives me and Pete hopefully like 20 minutes of just standing in the pit wall in the sunshine. <laughs> right, so we've uh, we've seen him cutting through the infield bits of the circuit, making his way back on his bike. Uh, so that's well, looking not too bad, uh, but it's probably him that actually did fall off it, so or whatever. So we'll find out in a minute. No, no, yeah, just maybe a bit too much lean angle, a bit too much brake, took the front, but yeah. Pushed well, when you're testing, you've got to test how fast you can go. Yeah. At least it's happened on the last day. Team, it's not a blind day, mate. No, it, it isn't, it isn't. Yeah, yeah, last day, little crash, so, yeah. 
it happens. It does. Mm. No, no major harm done. Uh, no significant crash damage. It's just like you know, a little bit of a um, little bit of fairing, a little bit of gravel rash, a few scratches on the uh, on the arrow exhaust. Luckily, we have a man for that sort of thing. But the most important thing is, he's okay. The bike will fix easy enough. But yeah. We kind of expect him at some point to uh, test the limit, and the last day is the time to do it. Oh, we've been collecting some boulders. They're big, aren't they? <laughs> so the joys of data logging, we get to actually sort of investigate in here uh, what happened, basically. And, and Franco fully admits he was trying, and we, we think it's great that he is trying. Um, and you can see this from here. The white lines are the, uh, like the lap he did his fastest lap of the day chasing Andy Irwin around is like qualifying lap um, and the coloured lines are the speed front and rear wheel speed lines from uh, just before he crashed so basically he's gone into that corner his peak speed before the corner was um, about 15 k's higher um, and then he's braked harder because he's going quicker uh, but it's this point here uh, that the front tucks and he's actually scrubbed most of the speed off but he has got more lean angle on than he had previously uh, and he it might be a little bit offline as well you never know um, so basically yeah he's fallen off because he's trying and that is the place to fall off falling off making silly mistakes can get annoying falling off because he's trying we have absolutely no problem with at all so that was going to be our last run of our sort of testing program anyway um, and so we've decided we're actually going to knock it on the head and load up well everything's not in too bad a shape uh, we could fix the bike and go back out but there's not really anything to be gained from it at this stage because we know the boy's got the pace and really we'd want to put new tires in it and bits that we haven't actually got anymore because they were going to be our last set so and that is it for riding around in spain so that's it for our testing here in spain we've had a really good time and we know franco's fast I was blown away by how quickly he's adapted to riding the big bike. It really suits his riding style. He loves getting the thing spinning around and sliding around. He's enjoying himself. It's been a really good team session as well, getting used to the bike and getting used to the data loggers and stuff like that. So I need to say a big, we need to say a big thank you to the guys at Honda Racing because not only have they really organised these tests, but they've let us go in and pick their brains on stuff they've been mega with me helping me learn the data logging and the um, electronic setting stuff so they've been absolutely brilliant they've given us some tips on some other stuff as well um, also I'd like to say thank you to Lee Johnson's team and Roger and Neil uh, Roger's been great because he's been sitting next to me with a laptop and I've been picking his brain for stuff as well they've given us some little tips the Paget's boys have been chipping in and the other riders as well Andy Irwin, um, David Todd, Lee Dino, they've all been giving it Franco advice and it's all just been really, really friendly and really positive. So absolutely brilliant test. Now all we've got to do is the 24 hour drive home. Can't wait. Thanks for watching and join us again next time for some more motorbike action.